Could you help me with the star, please? Oliver Carson looked over at his mate. Judith was standing on the stepladder. She had been trying to reach the top of the tree, but she wasn't quite tall enough. Oliver only had a few inches on her in height, but it was just enough to make the difference right now. Yeah, I'll get it. She got off the stepladder and handed him the silvery tinseled star. He climbed the steps, placed the star on the tree, straightened it up, and turned to her. Is that good? Yes, thank you, sweetheart. She closed her eyes for a long second and grasped the handle of the stepladder. You okay, babe? He asked, placing a hand on her shoulder. Judith had experienced her first shift and was now a full-fledged, integrated werewolf, but she was still getting used to her senses being more acute. Yeah, I'm fine. I never knew how sharp the scent of evergreen was. It's nice. Oliver smiled. As a lichen-born werewolf, he'd always had these instincts. Judith, as a sanguine-born werewolf, had to get accustomed to all of this. Like her recovery from the mauling, Judith weathered this new development with grace and tenacity. Oliver knew Judith was something special when they met at college. They shared a couple of classes together and became fast friends. He was drawn to her independent nature and the way she presented herself. Cool, calm, and collected, with a natural grace and elegance. They had a shared interest in the study of history, and often studied together. Sometimes these sessions turned into discussions, and a few times into debates. In the spring of their first year at school, Oliver began to look at Judith in a different light. He couldn't pinpoint exactly when his view of her shifted. Perhaps it was the way he saw her handle herself in tense situations, or the way she effortlessly fended off suitors. Perhaps it was her unwavering confidence in herself. Whatever it was, it was strong enough to push him towards pursuing her. When Oliver mustered up the courage to ask Judith on a date, she shut him down. I'm sorry, Oliver. I need to focus on my studies, and a relationship would be a distraction. They had spent a few weeks away from each other after that. This only made Oliver more smitten with her. It wasn't just that Judith told him no. She'd done it with a level of confidence and elegance that was rare. It didn't help that his hunting instincts were triggered when she said that. She wasn't prey. She was a challenge. Judith Mahoney was a potential mate. That level of independence would serve him and the Carson Pack well. Oliver wasn't ruled by his wolf nature or lichen instincts, but they did start barking a bit louder than usual. This woman was someone he could make a life with, a partner that would be his equal, and he wouldn't give up without a fight. Not yet, anyway. When Oliver started spending time with Judith again, he was careful not to spook her. He'd seen how she distanced herself from others who tried asking her out. To his surprise, she didn't do that with him but she did seem a little unsettled at times. True to his word, Oliver didn't give up. Every so often, he would broach the idea of going on a date, and every time, Judith would say no. When she finally did agree to go out with him, their attraction was mutual and electric. Both of them were caught up in it. As it turned out, Judith had been attracted to Oliver before he asked her out the first time, but she stubbornly refused to give in to those feelings and focused even harder on her schoolwork. Her attraction to Oliver was also why Judith kept spending time with him afterwards. She wanted him to be around, but she had to figure out her own mind first. Oliver laughed and said he was glad that he had been patient. Judith smiled and said she was glad he didn't give up. Now here they were, their first Christmas as husband and wife, alpha heir and mate. Oliver wasn't sure if he never expected this to happen or if it was always planned out for them. Either way, he couldn't be happier in this moment. Okay, I think we're ready to light it, Judith said, placing one last ornament on the tree. Will you do the honors? I would be happy to, Oliver said. He plugged in the cord, and she switched off the light. The living room lit up in a soft, multicolor glow. Judith beamed. Oh, it's perfect! She walked over and slipped an arm around his waist. You did a good job with the lights. He put an arm around her shoulders. I think the garland adds some extra shine, especially how you placed it. The lights bounce off of it. Come on, let's sit down and enjoy it for a few minutes, Judith said as she pulled Oliver toward the couch. They sat down, and Oliver placed his arm around her shoulders. Judith cozied up next to him, placing her head on his shoulder and folding her legs over to the side. The young couple took in the quiet atmosphere, the only sounds being the crackle of the fireplace 
the occasional noise of wind outside, and their breathing. He broke the silence first. So I know Christmas is a few days away. A week, to be precise. Oliver waved away her comment. I, I know, but I want to give you one of your gifts early. Judith sat up. Oliver, no, we said we'd wait. Honey, please, indulge your mate? Judith sighed. There was no getting him to back down, and she knew it. All right. Oliver looked as gleeful as a child as he reached into his pocket. He pulled out a dark blue jewelry box and placed it in Judith's hand. I thought we weren't going to spend a lot on each other this year, Judith chided, not in a nagging tone, but one with a hint of concern. It's not a diamond, babe. You have one of those already, Oliver teased. Just open it. Judith clicked open the box. A silver ring with a white stone caught the light from the tree. The setting was simple and elegant, a beautiful piece of jewelry that didn't stand out in a crowd. Oh, Oliver, it's beautiful. She ran a finger over the smooth, raised white stone. Is that a moonstone? Yes, it is. May I? He asked, reaching a hand out for the box. Judith gave it to him, and he lifted the ring out of the box and slipped it onto her finger. I thought that a moonstone set in silver would be perfect, Oliver said, kissing her hand. At first glance, it's kind of an inside joke. Neither the moon nor silver hurts us, contrary to what the old legends say. Although the moon does influence us some, it doesn't rule over us. He gently took her hand, turning it over to run his finger across the small, full moon-shaped scar on her wrist. Even though this scar will fade, you will always have it. A permanent reminder that you chose to become a werewolf. I wanted you to have a more beautiful reminder than a scar. Judith, you risked your life to become a werewolf. To become my mate. Oliver's eyes started to mist over. You gave up so much to be here. I don't think I'll ever find the words to tell you how much that means to me. How much I love you. How hard I will fight for you and protect you. He cleared his throat and wiped a tear from his eye. So, since this is your first Christmas as a werewolf and our first Christmas as mates, I thought this would be appropriate. Judith looked at her mate in wonder. Thank you, Oliver. She smiled as her eyes threatened to start leaking. How did I land a guy like you again? You told me you didn't have time for a man in your life. I thought, challenge accepted, and here we are. They laughed. Well, I'm glad I lost the challenge, Judith said as she leaned over and kissed him. His hold on her tightened, and Oliver leaned back on the couch, taking her with him. When they came up for air, Judith was blushing. Oliver gave her a quizzical look. She smiled shyly. I can hear your heart racing along with mine. I'm still getting used to that. He rested his hand on the side of her face. I love you, Judith. She placed her hand over his. I love you too, Oliver. She turned her head and kissed his hand, then moved off of him. Come on, let's get these boxes cleared away. We have to be at Mom and Dad's house by 11 a.m. tomorrow, and I don't want us to be late. All right. They stood up off the couch, and Oliver whispered in her ear, Maybe I'll make your heart race later. Judith giggled as he kissed her neck. The smile on her face and the gleam in her eyes said she just might let him.